switching us off in a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome to worship. A special welcome to uh, the family and friends of Rachel and Ashley who have come to witness the dedication of Lily. It's so lovely to see you all here. Uh, thanks to Mel and myself for the flowers on the holiness table this week and a reminder that it's the privilege of Rabina to provide the flowers next Sunday. Now next Sunday at, two, at 12 I'll get this right in a minute. Next Sunday at 10.30, our divisional leaders, JP and Karen Ramos, will be leading worship here at the hall. Uh, please come along and support them if you're able to. But for those who are not yet able or would like to feel comfortable to come back to the hall, Zoom will still be used. Um, just one notice for future weeks, and that's that the self-denial altar service this year will be on the 13th of March. So that's the 13th of March. Uh, Joanne will be handing out envelopes for your personal giving. Uh, thank you for listening. Are we just going to go straight into the song then? Are oh, you going to come? Okay, over to me. Good morning. Welcome to Salvation Army, especially those of you that don't normally join us. It's lovely to see you. I hope you have a good time. We're here to celebrate. We're celebrating Lily's dedication and we hope to have a good time together. Uh, we're a little short on the bass section. That's the bit at the back of the band that just does very long, low notes. But it's very, very important. And I'm the bass player. So... Sometimes I won't be here leading, I might have to go over there and play, as I'm going to have to do for the first song. We're going to sing Morning Has Broken. I used to love singing this when I was very young, because it was a pop song at the time. Many of you won't, this used to be in the charts. Cat Stevens sung it, it was very, very popular. And then we sung it a lot at school. So I hope some of you will know it, but we're singing Morning Has Broken. Thanking God for the good things that he's given us in creation. So the words are going to be on the screen. You'll hear the band. Do sing along. Those of you that know it, please sing up just so that everyone gets led to go the right way. And we're going to sing all three verses straight through.
Normally at that point I would say, thank you for a good sing. I'm going to have to trust you because all I could hear was the bass over at the back. But I'm sure we had a good sing to start our worship together and to put us in mind of the good things that we owe to God. We're going to turn to another song. If anyone's using a songbook, it's 749, but the words are going to be on the screen. And this is a song of prayer. And I chose this song and I, I kept thinking, I really, really want to use this song. And I didn't know why, because for a dedication, we want to be really bright. And this is, in some ways, quite a, a sort of slow, contemplative song. And it just seemed I had to do it. And then, as we've arrived for worship this morning, I've been given a note. Something that I've been asked to pray for during our prayer time. And I'll come back to this when we pray in a few minutes' time, saying, please pray for Ron, who's just lost his wife after 52 years, and Linda, whose cancer is back for the third time. We're in a, in a world, despite the fact we want to celebrate, we're in a world where there are issues that we need to bring to God. And we believe God has a big part in those things. Uh, maybe relevant to many more of us, I've been given news this morning. Many, many of you will know Paul Johnson. Paul married Julie uh, from here and is well known. He's uh, now a Salvation Army officer based down in London. This morning, he has had a very, very bad bleed on the brain. He's in hospital and uh, things are very, very critical. So I know that that's something you want to pray for. So despite the fact we're here to celebrate, we know we're in God's presence, and so we want to pray and bring those things to God. So we're going to uh, sing these three verses through together, and then I'm going to leave the meeting open. Uh, people may want to pray publicly. If you want to stand up and just say a, a very short prayer, feel free to do so. But after that little gap for you to pray if you want to, then I will pray as well. So 749, stay seated for this song and we're going to take us into a time of prayer. Thank you, Katie. so many people in that country, but, but not just there, Lord, but th throughout Europe, where we see the chance of conflict on this continent for the first time 
in decades, Lord, and it's it's a worrying time. So, Lord, we just want to place that situation into your hands and ask that you bring calm to the discussions that are going on and that you help peace to, to reign in that part of the world. And, Lord, just in our own country, the, the divisions that are in families and communities, Lord, throughout this country, we just ask that you heal those divisions, Lord, because you are the great healer and you are the God who can bring communities back together. And Lord, we've just been told of people who are, are suffering, Lord, people like Ron who's just lost his wife for 52 years and how lonely he must be feeling at this moment. We just ask that you pour your spirit on him, Lord, and let his friends and neighbours know that they they care. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to support Linda and her family as uh, she has to go through cancer treatment again for the third time. But Lord, we're also here today to celebrate. And we just want to bring Ashley and Rachel and Lily and the whole family, Lord, before your throne of grace. And we ask that you pour your blessing on them as a family and that they may grow in a knowledge of your grace and your love for them, Lord. And we just ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father, the news that we've had this morning reminds us so much that our life is full <coughs> of ups, times when we want to celebrate, times when we want to recognise the good things that we have. And today is a, an opportunity for us to bring you into that celebration, to dedicate a new life to you. But also times when things seem very difficult, things might seem bleak, and we hear of sadness <coughs> and illness, and we know that in situations and with people that we know so well, at this moment, there will be worries and concerns. Lord, we thank you that you are involved in every one of those situations. We thank you that you are a God of healing. And yes, if there can be a miraculous gift of healing, Lord, we would want to see that. But if healing comes just in acceptance, that you are there, that you are a God of love and that you love into every situation. May that be the healing that comes. Lord, we pray for all the things we've already heard mentioned, our world, our country. We pray for our call. We pray for everybody gathered here this morning and we pray for ourselves. Lord, most of all, we ask that today is a day when you come close to us and we recognise something of your great love for each and every one of us. So be with us. Bless this time together. May we know that you are here with us. And we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're going to listen to the message from the songsters. <coughs> Thank you. 
song says that was lovely and again a reminder that in the difficult times it's the love of God that can make such a difference in our lives now people that know me well know that I love computers well always got a computer or a phone with me I think it should be a basic human right to have Wi-Fi can't understand people who don't like using computers at all. But I have a difficulty. My computer, I, it is my source of information, source of communication, source of entertainment, but there is something that I can't do. Can't use a controller. Makes no sense to me. <coughs> I see people playing all sorts of games and I've tried and it's rubbish it's too complicated now using a computer is not too complicated I'll do the programming and I can you know I can debug things all sorts of things but I just can't use a controller so some of the things that I want to do to entertain myself with a computer I can't do because it's too difficult and there are lots of things in life that are too difficult anyone think of things that they find too difficult any of the children think of things that are too difficult 
Everyone good at their maths and English at school? No? Can be quite difficult. What about the grown ups? Do you find things difficult? Children. Children! He says with Miles stood on his lap. Now, sometimes it's the simplest things that are actually the most important. So I've got something that I reckon most of you would find entertaining. So if some of the children want to come to the front, I'm going to give you something that you might find entertaining. If you're really, really small, then your grown-up can bring you. Elliot first. Well done. Have one of those. Any great books and more to come yet? A pleasure. Anybody else want any of the grown ups want one? Go on, have a few grown ups. So we can spread it around. Come on, Ian. You're a... Oh, take one for you, that one. Take a few, spread a few round the back. I can spread a few round the back. Oh, no, bubbles. Anything is going for me, Neil. I think. Now, Julius. You can indeed. Right, anybody else want one? Do you like the one? Never let him say you have to go to You keep hold of it. Right, so we're going to see if these work now. Just be careful. Don't spill it on, I can see it, they're working somewhere already. So, let's have a go. Ah! Oh. Aren't they lovely? Anyone that's got bubbles, anybody that's got bubbles, you can blow them at any time during the rest of the meeting. You have my permission. But, bubbles are really entertaining. I remember when I was small that I could spend hours in the garden blowing bubbles, trying to blow big bubbles. But it was a really simple thing. Just a bit of dish, uh, dishwashing liquid, bit of water, and some sort of loop, and you try to make big bubbles. Simple and entertaining. Now, sometimes our faith as Christians gets really, really complicated. You hear all sorts of difficult things that we need to learn to be a Christian. Anyone know about transubstantiation? No? We don't really have transubstantiation in the Salvation Army, but that's a difficult concept about Christianity. Anyone know about the teleological argument? No? Really difficult. There are other things that cause arguments. Creation or evolution or create uh, intelligent design, all sorts of things. So many things that people have arguments about. But we need to get back to the really simple things. The really simple things 
are the most important. I want to read you maybe one of the simplest Bible verses that we find. A lot of you will know this, but it's very, very important. This Bible verse says this, and it's so simple. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not die but have everlasting life. How simple is that? There are all sorts of difficult concepts to get to grips with in the Bible. There's some really good stories. It's well worth taking time to read. But some of the concepts are quite difficult. But of all the concepts, the most important one, and maybe the simplest, is that God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you. So if you believe that Jesus died for you, you will have everlasting life. So, it's important to get back to the simple things. Remember the bubbles, remember the simple things, and remember how much God loves you. We're going to take up the collection in a second, and while we're doing that, we're going to have a chorus. There's going to be a video on the screen. You're going to need to stand up for this, so you can do the actions. The actions are going to be demonstrated on the screen. If you can't sing, do the actions. If you can't do the actions, sing. If you can do both, brilliant. If you can't do either, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> this is a simple concept. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in, a, a, in his hands because he loves us. So we're gonna stand, we're gonna give the collection, do your actions, blow your bubbles. Let's just enjoy singing this lovely chorus together. Loud. This is great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hand. He's broken down the skyscraper.
you accept the opportunity to be to you. But you will use it to, to enable us to use it wisely. The extension of your kingdom here in the Amen. Amen. Well, we know why we've got so many people here today. We have the dedication of Lily. So we're going to sing a song. We're going to sing the first two verses of song 1117. The words are going to be there on the screen. It's not a song, it's not even a song I know very well, but it is so appropriate. It talks about the fact that we've come together with joyful hearts to offer this life and to bring it up in the right way. We bring this baby girl so dear to God. So we're going to sing the first two verses. You can stay seated while we sing. We'll sing the first two verses while we sing. Now as we get to the second verse, I'm going to ask Mum and Dad, Lily, Godparents, Colour Sergeant, YPSM, various people are going to come and join me up on the platform. I think we'll fit everybody on. And then we're going to have our dedication time. group here on the platform together. We're praying this is going to be a really good time. About two years ago, <laughs> Evie was dedicated. We didn't meet together for another 18 months after that Sunday, but I think things are slightly different now. So we're expecting a really wonderful time. So I'm going to address some words to Ashley and Rachel. I'm going to ask them to make some promises. Then I'm going to ask the godparents to make the same promises. Then I'm going to ask you to make the same promises. So it's important that you listen. Since God has given Oh, <laughs> Evie looks very concerned. She looked very concerned when she first saw me this evening, this morning. And so did Lily. I don't think I'm even going to try and take Lily. She did look very worried. So I think we can do it slightly at a distance, if that's all right with you. Yeah? Good girl. <laughs> Since God has given you the precious gift of children he's also given you awesome responsibility god's given you responsibility to train up your children in the ways of god be an example of christian living both inside and outside the home to provide for protect and nurture your children to make them part of your family sharing with them your love your time and your life. 
and to teach them about Jesus and to show how to serve, obey and honour him with all their hearts. But you're not alone in this responsibility. God, your Heavenly Father, is always with you to provide you with the strength, encouragement, love and wisdom you need. All you have to do is to go to him and he will provide you with all that you need. And you have Christian friends here who will always be happy to support and advise. By coming up here this morning, you as parents are publicly saying that you want to thank God for the gift of these lovely children. I'm going to ask, ask you to answer some statements. In doing so, you make promises to God, not to me, not to the Salvation Army, not even to the children. But you make these promises to God. So I'm going to make these statements and ask you to respond positively. In the dedication of this child, you desire to give her fully to God. You wish to thank God for entrusting this precious life into your hands. And you want her to be nurtured in all that is pure, lovely and honest. To this end, you promise that you will keep her so far as you are able from everything which is likely to harm her in body, mind or spirit. You promise that as she grows in wisdom and stature, you will teach her the ways of the gospel, encourage her to seek Christ as saviour and support her in the commitment of her life to the service of God. If you're willing to make these promises, then I will dedicate Lily Mayer in the name of God and on behalf of the Salvation Army. Will you make those promises? We will. Wonderful. Godparents, you are charged with doing the same things. Will you support the family in exactly the same way? Wondrous. Congregation, Salvationists, friends, will you also support the family as they bring Lily Mayer up in all the ways that they have promised this morning. Yeah. Louder. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Absolutely excellent. <coughs> so, in the name of the Lord and on behalf of Nuneaton Corps of the Salvation Army, I recognise Lily Mayer Nichols in recognition of the promises that have been made by her parents this day. And normally I would pray now, but we have John, and I thought it was important that John had a part in this meeting. We've missed seeing John for quite a long time, so John is gonna pray for the family now. Will you all stand, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we just bring to you Lily and Evie and Ashley and Rachel as they have brought this baby to you today. We pray, dear Lord, for your blessing upon this child. We thank you that she is born into a happy home. We thank you for the love and the care that she will get from her parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. And Lord, we just thank you for that wonderful chance. But we know that life will not always be easy. And so we pray that you will give her grace to carry on, even when difficult times come. And for the parents, dear Lord, we pray that you will give them the strength to do what you would have them do, so that she will grow up a stronger person, knowing that you love her, and that you care for her. And so, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. And for us all, Lord, as we have made that commitment to you, we pray that you, we will support this family, that each one of us may do our part to bring, help bring Lily into a world which is fit for <coughs> young children. And so, dear Lord, we just ask for your blessing upon her. 
and for the parents this up this morning. Thank you, dear Lord, for her life and all that she means to us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. I'll ask the young people's leader to join me. We have to do the paper. Please, yes, please be seated. So having dedicated Lily Mayer, we have a certificate of dedication and a cradle roll certificate. We're going to hand over. Would you like to welcome the newest member, not only of Nuneaton Salvation Army, but the newest member of the Salvation Army in the world? <laughs> We're going to sing the last verse of that song while Frank returned to their seats. <laughs> going to listen to the message from the band in just a second. They're going to play a piece of music called Any Time. The words of the chorus that go with it are, I want to live right, that God may use me at any time and anywhere. That's what we do as salvationists. We want to be ready to recognise the love of God that holds us in his hand at any time and anywhere. So it's a really nice bright piece of music. Give me a few seconds to go over and join the band and we're going to listen to any time. Thank you. 
Thank you, band. I really enjoyed that. I hope you did. There's lots of events and experiences that come unexpectedly and sometimes uninvitedly, sometimes even unwelcomely into our lives. Many of you are here today specifically because Rachel invited you to celebrate Lily's special day and that is a wonderful thing. I'm not really sure whether I prefer planned things or surprise things. I'm struggling a bit at the moment as I know that we're going to be told on Thursday where we're moving to in July and waiting for that has been really, really awful. But sometimes an unexpected surprise can be really different. Rose organised a surprise, 40th, uh, surprise 50th birthday party for me uh, quite a long time ago now. <laughs> Getting folk from all over the country to come together and that was great. But these days, surprises come in many different forms and sometimes not even physical forms. I said to you earlier, I'm on my computer all the time and I love Facebook and the internet in general can be a source of many surprises. Every day you'll go on and it will remind you of things that happened five years ago and 10 years ago and 15 years ago. And that's lovely. You get reminded and surprised. But there is something about some of the surprises that really annoys me. It's to do with the algorithm. Now the algorithm is that little thing in the computer that links what you've looked at with what you might like to look at and suddenly new things pop up on your screen. Some time ago I was talking to someone about camera lenses and now I can't get camera lenses off my Facebook feed. All the time it's offering me exciting new things and I have to be very strong just to make sure I don't go and buy another one and get myself in trouble with Rose. I tested it out as I was writing this down. I thought, I wonder how it would work, and I just typed uh, Tenerife Holiday into Google, and within five minutes, Facebook had an advert from Thomas Cook on. Never had an advert from Thomas Cook before, but suddenly, there it is. The internet gives you what you search for. The algorithm takes it further. <coughs> it's a little bit like that in our spiritual life. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, we read this little verse, and it says, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The things that are important to you in your life are the things that are going to influence the rest of your life. It's like an algorithm. Sometimes we make wrong choices in life. We focus on the wrong things because the things in our heart aren't right. And life picks that up and works on it. Our wrong choices can bring us more wrong choices and things grow and grow. A small wrong choice now can lead to dreadful wrong choices in the future. If you hang around with someone that you shouldn't, someone that's involved in wrongdoing, before long the temptation is there for you to get involved in those same wrongdoings yourself but it's not all doom and gloom. We can leave that behind and have a change of heart. We can be, look, begin to look for the best things. And you need to know if you want to change your life for the best, that's the work of God. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, we read this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about 
the, sorry, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the peace of God will be with you. If you want an algorithm for your life, something that will bring you more and more good things, then do what that Bible reading said. Build your life on what is true and honourable, right and pure, lovely and admirable. You'll reflect those things out. And the Bible reading tells us that's the work of God and you will have the peace of God in your life. You need to actually look for it though. Again in the Bible, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, we read this. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. It is important, if you want those lovely things in your life, that you invite God to come and make those changes, to be that algorithm in your life. What a promise and challenge that is. Of course, the more we think about God, the more we think about Jesus, the more we speak to him in prayer, the more we read about him in the Bible, and the more we endeavour to live the life that he wants us to, the more we then receive from him. It grows and it grows. <coughs> Seeking God, finding God and having him as the influence on your life is a wonderful thing. That's what I pray will happen in Lily's life. But for each of you, I pray that you'll remember it too. You don't need an automated computer algorithm for your life. You need God's promise. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Isn't that wonderful? Today, we saw Lily drawn near to God. Parents who are going to endeavour to bring her up to know God in her life. What a wonderful thing. Get that algorithm for your life. Let's pray together. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we have so many influences upon our lives. So many things that could lead us far away from you and yet we're assured if we turn to you if we seek you our lives will be full of those wonderful things peace and purity love joy so Lord we pray that you will be the lasting and main influence on everything that we do in our lives may it be true for Lily this morning may it be true for each and every one of us. And Lord, if we don't know it for ourselves, may we seek out Christian friends who can point us in the right direction to learn more and more about you and become everything that you planned that we should be. Bless each and every person gathered here this morning. Bless us as we now spend time together celebrating, having a family time, but may we not forget that this is your house and you are here with us. And we don't leave you behind here. You go with us into every coming moment of our lives. Lord, help us recognise and respond to that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing one more song to send us on our way. Lord of all hopefulness, the words there on the screen, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust, ever childlike, no care could destroy. That's a wonderful thing about children. They have a simple trust. Let's never try to lose that. Be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. This song goes through a picture of a day from the morning to our noontime, 
to the evening, to the close of the day. Remember, God is with you at all times, all day. I'm going to go and play with the band, and we're going to, I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to conclude our meeting with this, and then I'll pronounce the benediction from over by the band when we've played.